afloat with Henry Morgan. For two days, Hero watches and patiently tends to Geoffrey Hunter as he lies in the grip of the deadly fever. Tenderly, he administers to him the mixture he prepared from herbs and leaves. While Geoffrey lies so near death, Kitty waits for him to rescue her. She waits in vain, finally thinking that he has forgotten her. Diaz deserts from the flying gull, joining Kitty and Dolores in the stone hut. Eventually, Geoffrey recovers and goes at once to the hut to rescue Kitty, but he is too late. Diaz and Dolores have taken her, a helpless prisoner, with them on their way to Cuba. Under cover of night, Geoffrey and Hero get to Port Royal to give warning to Henry Morgan that Dolores knows his plans. But once again, they are too late. Morgan has sailed. At the risk of their liberty, Geoffrey decides to appeal to Sir Thomas Motford. Sir Thomas and Colonel Atterbury enter Sir Thomas's study, and the Colonel sees a bulge in the curtains and, suspecting an intruder, fires his pistol. Hero falls, revealing Geoffrey standing behind him. So it's two intruders and not one. Well, I'll fix the other party. Stop your murdering. Let me see what you've done to my friend. What are you two men doing here? You think you can ransack the governor's home? We're here to see Sir Thomas Mutford. No, you've not killed him. It's a pity. One nigger less wouldn't do any harm. He's a man the same as you are, and my friend. The ball from your pistol grazed the side of his head and stunned him. You haven't told us yet what you're doing here. My business is with Sir Thomas and not with a stranger. Haven't you recognized me yet, Sir Thomas? Your face seems familiar. Colonel Atterbury, bring that lamp forward so I can see in a better light. What? It isn't possible. Hmm. Did you think to conceal yourself with that growth of hair on your face, Hunter? Hunter? Do you mean... Yes, say... this is the man the island has been looking for. Where is she hiding, Hunter? What have you done with her and the necklet? Come, answer me, man. Where have you been all these days? Has the pursuit become too hot for you? You come back to throw yourself upon my clemency? Ring the bell to some slaves to come and hold this man, Colonel. Sir Thomas, please, you must listen to me. Don't make a mistake now which you can't rectify. Don't do anything which you might regret. Regret? Hmm. What could I regret? Especially when I have within my hands a scoundrel who took advantage of my hospitality, who foully schemed with a Spanish spy, the man who broke faith with the man who befriended him. You will be held until Captain Morgan comes back. I promised him the, the pleasure of dealing with you. But first you will tell me where that woman is hiding. Please, Sir Thomas, I... I've been very ill. I'm under a great strain. I, I can't make head or tail of what you're talking about. I have a story to tell you, but there are so many gaps which you have to fill in. The man is wasting our time by talking. I'll ring through for the slaves, Sir Thomas. Don't do that, sir. Why do you think we sneaked into your home like a couple of thieves, Sir Thomas? Because we have to see you. Because we have to get your help. Help? Huh. Why, the man's a raving lunatic. You thought tonight to sneak back into my house and help yourself to some other treasures. If we'd not been talking so late, you'd have succeeded. Where have you hidden that woman? I understand you're talking about the woman who posed as Antoinette de Lacy. As well you know, you scheming scoundrel. Didn't you, with her help, steal the Aztec necklet? Didn't you take it from Morgan's cabin and then give it to the tavern wench Kitty who wore it? And then didn't you, together with the two women, disappear into the night? Oh, everything is at sixes and sevens. I can't make head or tail of anything. But I've come here tonight, Sir Thomas. I'm risking my very life in coming to you. Because Henry Morgan and his men are going to their deaths. They're going right into a tractor. What poppycock is this you're talking? Lies to get you out of your predicament. You have told me that I, together with a woman who is here posing as your kinswoman, took from Captain Morgan the Aztec necklace. And then, with Kitty, we ran away together. Of course you did. It's quite obvious. So that's what the plot was. How cleverly it worked. Gradually everything is piecing itself together in my mind. I have not been with that woman at all. <laughs> Do you expect us to believe that? I can prove where I've been. I... I've been working in the swamps. I was sent there as an escaped convict. Ah, not... That is something which you and your position can easily prove, Sir Thomas. Send one of your secretaries to the authorities. Ask them to send you the record of Geoffrey Hunter. 
You will find it there. I was recaptured and sent to the swamp the night the necklace was taken from Morgan's ship. I'm not telling you lies. You can prove I was in the swamps. You, an escaped convict? Oh. Well, what the devil are you doing here? If you'd been working in the swamps, Sir Thomas, you'd do everything you could to get away from there. As it was, I barely escaped with my life. If it had not been for my friend whom your companion has not been conscious, I wouldn't be here now. Sir Thomas, I think we should hear what this man has to say. He's forfeited his liberty by coming here. Therefore, he must have a serious message for us. I seem to remember Captain Morgan not being fully satisfied with the explanation that we formed about this affair. He could never understand why this man, Hunter, would go away with two women. Oh, well, it won't do any harm to hear what he has to say, Colonel. So, Hunter... You're an escaped convict. That is why you were never too eager to accept our friendships until that woman who was living in my home decoyed you. That was why you never talked much about yourself, eh? It doesn't matter about me. But I want to know what really happened. I want you to tell me all you know, and, and I'll tell you all I know. In that way, we can get a complete picture. I have come here to save Captain Morgan, all his men, and his fleet of ships from falling into the merciless hands of the Spanish. I know that Captain Morgan has sailed into a trap. A trap set by that woman who was living in your home, Sir Thomas. She obviously was a Spanish spy. She and a man called Diaz stole that necklace, of that I'm sure. Now I know you lie. Diaz has sailed with Captain Morgan. He took your place aboard the ship. I'll wager my liberty against your year's salary that I'm right. Then where are Diaz and this woman now? On their way back with Kitty from where that woman came. How do you know? Before I escaped from the swamp, my friend Hero here and I found an old stone hut lost in the jungle. Hiding in that hut was a Spanish woman who claimed to be Antoinette de Lacy. She was guarding Kitty, who was being kept prisoner. Fortunately, Kitty had been left alone in the hut, while this woman had gone for a stroll. Unfortunately, she came back too soon. But for the brief time I was there, Kitty told me that Dietz and this woman had kidnapped her, and that he was taking her back to some Spanish possession. I gathered from what she said that they had the Aztec necklace, then the Spanish woman was seen returning to the hut. I had no time to hear anything further. But I... I promised Kitty I would come back and rescue her. And did you? Hero and I escaped from the swamps that night. But I was stricken down with fever. I, I only recovered yesterday morning. When I knew what had happened, I went straight to the hut. But we were too late. They'd gone. On their way back from wherever she came... Mm, she must have had a ship lurking offshore, Sir Thomas. If we are to believe this man's story, yes. Oh, we can soon check up and see when he was arrested. If it was on the night that the necklet was taken, we'll know he couldn't have had a hand in it. True, very true, but he must have taken it. Didn't he say that Hunter here was the only person who knew the necklet's hiding place? Hmm, uh, how do you explain that, Hunter? I can't explain it. The Ertz and the other woman must have discovered it by accident. Why did this other woman run away? How did you people discover that she was an imposter? Well, I knew the real Antoinette de Lacy in England. I arrived in Jamaica unexpectedly. I called to see Sir Thomas the very night that the necklace was taken. Morgan was here. Morgan and I got to talking about Antoinette de Lacy, and we were soon at loggerheads. Morgan then realized that we were not talking about the same woman, and so he believed she was an imposter. After saying goodnight to Sir Thomas, we watched in the garden, hoping that she'd come back so that I could see her. But I, unfortunately, spoiled their little game because I found them there, demanded to know what they were doing and brought them inside. While we were talking and they were telling me all their suspicions, the woman returned. She must have overheard us. She fled. I see. Then when she arranged to have the necklace stolen, she had no idea it would be necessary for her to go into hiding. She intended to stay here as your kinswoman, Sir Thomas, until it was time for her to meet the ship to take her back to her homeland. If what you're saying is true... I suppose it is. You know, I'm being very generous in allowing you to tell me your story, Hunter. But it will be all the worse for you if I found any, any falsehood. I'll accept that risk. Tell me what else you know about that night. When the woman escaped, Sir Thomas, Captain Morgan and I set off in pursuit. Well, she got away from it. Morgan then remembered a friendship with you and thought she might have gone to the Flying Gull to you. So we went to the ship. It was there Morgan discovered one of his crew dead in his cabin and the necklet gone. Yes. It was then that we were told that Kitty had been seen wearing the Aztec necklet for a while at the Dolphin Tavern the previous night. 
Morgan went straight to the tavern then, but Kitty had gone. Oh, I see. It was very convenient to have Kitty wearing the Aztec neck of the tavern the previous night. Have her missing the next morning and have me missing too. The obvious conclusion was that I had taken the necklace and Kitty and had gone away. But you, Colonel, nearly upset the little plan because the Spanish woman had to go into hiding too. No wonder Captain Morgan was a little puzzled that I should take those two women with me, especially as he believed I had given my devotion to the woman who called herself Aunt Nanda Lacey. I, I, I still can't make head or tail of what really happened, Hunter. By what I know, and from what you have told me, I can tell you everything. I was infatuated by the woman who was living in your house, Sir Thomas. To me, she was a symbol of something of which I thought I'd lost forever. I never thought I would again come into a home such as you have, be entertained by such a person, be admired and flattered by such a person. I thought all that was gone for good. I let myself believe I'd fallen in love with her. But you were a member of a buccaneer's ship. Surely you must have been crazy to think you could fall in love with the woman whom we believe to be my kinswoman. It was crazy, and I knew it to be crazy, but I couldn't resist going back for a short while and getting a glimpse of that life which I had lost. I'm used to the nice things of life, Sir Thomas. I was born to them. Coming here into your home, being accepted as your guest, sitting down to your table, living was like living a new life. I believed the sincerity of this woman who called herself Antoinette. I believed that she was in love with me. Of course, now I know it was just to serve her own plans, to get my knowledge from me. Against my bitter judgment, she persuaded me to give her my love until I sailed away with Captain Morgan. Hunter, before you go any further, I think perhaps you'd better tell me for what crime it was you were sent out here from England. What is the story behind Geoffrey Hunter's exile? What crime could this man have done to warrant such a punishment? Listen to the next exciting episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.